Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about the low top version of the exact shoe that Jokic is wearing after signing with a Chinese brand, 361 degrees. And this is the big three future. The price that you can get these at does depend on your location. Uh, as a reference, I bought these from China. Uh, paid about 120 bucks USD. Uh, that's converted uh, before shipping. I believe they go for $160 on their official US site. Their shoes have always been known to be cheap or let's say affordable, sorry. But see, that's the one downside of signing a player like Jokic. Those shoes are not gonna be so cheap anymore. Anyways, Jokic wears the high top version. Uh, from what I can tell, it's the exact same shoe in terms of the missile, also materials and all that, except for the higher cut. I had to get this same colorway that he was rocking most of the times too. Uh, like I told you in the AG4 video, 361 degrees really pulled this off and signed the best player in the world right now. Well, given his friendship with Aaron Gordon, not entirely a surprise to me. His actual signature shoe should be coming soon later this year. So this is kind of like the Shockwave 5 Pro from Anta. No teaser, but a premium model to give the star player before their own shoe comes out. The AG4 was a fantastic shoe with amazing traction and a nice bounce. How does the new Big 3 Future perform? Let's get right into it. Yeah, I wanted to show you the box this time, which doubled the shipping cost. Drop a like, I guess. It has a shiny logo that says Future on top. Some simple branding. And uh, once you open it up, the Future theme is all over the inside too. Uh, those four symbols apparently stand for creation, hexagon, inherit, and open-minded. Grammatically inconsistent. Also two of those four, us Chinese people usually lack. Sounds like the self-introduction of an underqualified job candidate. Maybe just write it in Chinese, probably looks cooler anyways. Pointing out some important parts, the big three name, if I'm not mistaken, is referring to the tech specs and set up with three things. Their foam called Quick CQ Tech, uh, same as the AG4. Quick Flame, the lower layer foam that adds to the bounce back. A sore plate that extends into the forefoot in that fork shape just like the Jordan 11s. What does the material remind you of? Jordan 37, right? It feels like the same texture too. Breathable, but comfort is meh. I also bought these together with the GT Cut 3 ones, and the ventilation is not as good as the new GT Cut, even though it has these pokes through nettings. I will say though, I didn't like that on the Jordan 37. On these, at least there was no pinching or discomfort much better than the materials on their DVD-1. That upper was terrible. There's a look at the also. Uh, one more thing is the weight. They're right around average, coming in at 420 grams for size 10 and a half. Also, this is not an upper that you can bend very easily. So torsional support and stability are decent. No containment issues either. As to how the Big 3 Future performs on the court, I gotta give them credit for the cushion because this setup feels amazing on feet. You can really feel the responsiveness from the foam. The midsole is soft enough to avoid being too stiff, but you also get a quick snap in your movements with quite a lot of heel compression. And core feel isn't the low to the ground type because there is a good amount of foam underneath. It might not be visible on clip given the caging, but cushion, impact protection, I would say these are top of the game. Traction is decent, gets the job done, but not like crazy good as the AG4. I mean, they're from the same brand, I had to make that comparison. I could hardly find a shoe that beats the AG4 Traction from the past year. So don't expect Traction at that level, especially because this translucent also picks up quite a lot of dust. It does squeak, not consistently loud for those who care about it. But yeah, if you put arguably the two most important aspects together, cushion is definitely the highlight, not the traction. With the fit, I went true to size. I'm a US 10 and a half in most Nike sneakers. I got these in a 10 and a half as well, and the fit was right out for me. I definitely don't recommend sizing down. 
because the toe box is more on the snug side. But for those who want a spacious fit, you can go up a half size if you like. About standard average width, wide footers you should be fine. But most importantly, given these Jordan 37 kind of materials, I had no pinching issues on any specific area. So even with me being not really a fan of this type of stuff normally, I really have nothing to complain about because it didn't cause any discomfort, only a little bit of soreness after a long sesh. But that's also because I have extremely flat feet. Yeah, the big three setup pretty much maximized cushion, but can be a little bit too much for flat footers like myself, especially with the sore plate really giving you that springy effect. And that's a trade-off with bouncy setups like this for us. Jokic wearing something like this that prioritizes cushion also makes perfect sense, given how he's been mostly wearing the GT Jump before. Overall, um, I would say this is a solid shoe. Uh, like solid, but not super impressive. Actually, the cushion, I would say, is top notch. If you prioritize traction, the AG4 does outperform this with the grip. This type of materials, again, not my type, but it was for sure manageable given how it turned out. So I'd probably have this as an A tier shoe. Close, but not quite S tier to me yet. And I really don't want to sound like I'm nitpicking, but when brands like this start to make premium models at a much higher price, that just changes the narrative so much for me as a consumer. Sure, the performance might be great, but if it isn't elite, I think it kind of loses the fun in it or defeats the purpose of you buying a pair of shoes from 361 degrees. It's like your favorite spot to grab a quick bite for dirt cheap, all of a sudden turn into a high-end restaurant. How would you feel about that? The AG4 in comparison just has so much better value at 100 bucks or below, and it's a signature shoe. But that's normal, that's what money does to people. All right, enough said, I think. Please feel free to share what you think about this shoe or where the brand is going in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.